Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel and today we have a big update for you. Today we finally got the next DLC from Season 1, Hail to the King. And with the addition of some new skins for our survivors, we've got a lot of fixing and we've got a few new abilities or tweaks and quality of life changes and we also have some big balances and a few buffs to those survivors much needed and a big nerf to a specific demon that we all know who it is. So the new content is the new survivor Blacksmith which is a support class. It's got a lot of health, I think it's 1300 it goes up to and we've also got some new weapons, a rapid fire crossbow and a quarter staff. The rapid fire crossbow it's just about okay, I, I'm terrible with ranged weapons anyway but it does shoot five bolts quite quickly. It's definitely better than the other crossbows. I'm just assuming that the damage is a bit lower on this. I haven't really tested it. The quarter staff, I have played it on the new mission from Henry and it's brilliant. It's got huge AoE attack and you can just decimate those hordes of enemies whenever they're there. I really like this and I really look forward to playing with this. We obviously got the new single player mission out of tricks which features Henry against the Plague Bringer. And if you haven't played that yet, I'm gonna put a link for it just here on the top right corner of the screen. And the new premium outfits, we've got Lord Arthur, Rightful King, Warrior Ash Williams, S Smart Halloween, Warrior Ash Williams Cell Sword, Henry the Red Berserker Cosplay, and Henry the Red Red Pikeman. About the new changes, we have some quality of life changes here. Pablo now, besides starting with a new amulet, he can carry one extra amulet and provide more shield to nearby teammates when using an amulet. So it's a big buff to Pablo here. Also, now when Pablo shields a teammate, they will receive the camouflage from Pablo for eight seconds and I've always actually thought this should be the case because otherwise what's the point of Pablo? Of course it's invisible but I just don't think that invisibility of his is that great. It led people to play Pablo like a lone wolf rather than an actual support. So definitely a big buff to Pablo and I can definitely see people playing together with Pablo a little bit more. So the leaders now can apply more pink F and I will talk a little bit more about this later on the balance updates. And another change that is just a quality of life change and it always made me think why is this game does why does this game doesn't have that anyway which is whenever you're approaching an item or traps as a demon and you you are you pressing the button before you can interact with it and then it doesn't really trigger so you have to press the button again it's just really annoying it always caught me so I have to keep, you know, pressing the button a few times and then it would start setting up the trap or opening up the chest. Just a little bit annoying and I'm so glad that they fixed this now. Now as soon as you press the button, you approach the item, it already starts activating it. In general here, I'm not gonna read all this, but there's a lot of changes as well. This is mostly bugs that have been fixed. You guys can pause the video here and just have a read on it. I'm dropping a link for the, all this anyway down the description. Now here's what I'm really excited about is the balance update. So first about Pablo, this is what I was talking about before. Now Pablo's Legacy of El Brujo extra shield amount is set to a value of 20 for 8 seconds and includes an additional charge. So Lord Arthur's melee increase from 3 to 5 in terms of how much pink F he can spend on it. Health, stamina, shield increase from 3 to 4. So he can actually spend 5 extra points on his abilities. So Leader Ash is similar, it's not as much melee, but it does increase from 3 to 4 for the melee, ranged, health, stamina and shield. And he increase range from 3 to 5 and then 3 to 4 for the other stats, apart from melee. So you can see here that they're definitely pushing Lord Arthur more towards melee and pushing any towards range. I mean, they were already like that, but now they're just moving more and more towards that. Lord Arthur, everybody used to complain that he was too weak, so hopefully this will give him a little bit of a buff now. And he was already quite strong, I think, and a lot of people did really, really well with Annie. This might make her one of the best survivors as we have it. Now, I'm so happy about the next one, which is Kelly. Kelly, she's been the underdog for the whole past two months. Has it been two months already? Since the hunters have their damage nerfed, Kelly's really been at the bottom of the tier list. So Kelly's Weapon Master Meat Hammer damage has had an increase from 30% to 60%. So that's 100% increase. And then also her bleeding damage increased from 20 to 25%. Not massive, but decent. Great for Kelly. 
and I can't wait to play her more. She was actually the first survivor I've ever played with, and I can't wait to go back to playing her. Now, this is the one that everybody knew. Puppeteer has been nerfed. Not as much as some people thought, but it has been nerfed. Basically, the power possession now has a cooldown increase from 60 seconds to 80 seconds. So an extra 20 seconds on the clock there. And I think that's exactly what it needed to happen. Also, the damage of power possess has decreased from 25% to 15%. So he's doing 10% less damage when he is power possessing the units. There's no mention on the puppeteer's units that, and I had a look, they're still doing 20 percent damage if they have those points on the skill tree puppeteer i think still sits at a strong place but definitely had a little bit of a nerf which is what everybody said it needed it just needed a little bit of a tweak so all in all i'm really really happy with the direction that this game is going i mean the new survivor blacksmith he's got the new skill which is to craft weapons and i'm sure everybody's read about it and you've seen sledge's video about it so now he can craft weapons as he finds scrap metals apparently he can craft both melee and ranged weapons and the more scrap metals he accumulates, the higher the rarity of the weapon he can produce. And I was trying this out on the tutorial, and as you can see here, I just tried to produce a weapon and I produced a knife. So you can really produce anything. It can be bad, it could be good. It's just the luck of the draw. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you think these balance changes are positive and do you think they are enough to balance out the game? I personally think they are decent. If they're enough, I'm not sure, but they're decent. I play mainly Demon, as you guys know. And since the last update, I really didn't lose many games. I, I don't play that much anyway, but I didn't really lose that many games. So I'm hoping now that with the leaders being buffed and Kelly being buffed again, we're going to start seeing a little be more of Kelly, start seeing more of the leaders playing and also the leaders with more high scores and also maybe we'll see a little bit more of Pablo which he always turned up but maybe we're gonna see a little bit more of Pablo now and that will balance out the picks of Shero because Shero is the most picked support no question about it but this just changes the mechanics of Pablo a little bit more so maybe this will incentivize teams that have a Pablo to just stay together a little bit more because if Pablo can keep everybody hidden I mean that's massive really anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video please drop me a like if you did and hit the subscribe button for more content and I'll see you all next time.